from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. It's only entertainment. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Let's make this really simple. All you need to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I can't make it any easier for you than that. Let's say hello here to Rex on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Rex. It's an honor to talk to you, Tom. It is indeed. And uh, I want to know, is this the image that the Republican are given that vice president's husband to walk around with kids? Is that what we all fought for, to have him get on stage and do that? You got to wonder. And you got to wonder. Meow. I hope no one's buying into this, because this guy is standing there as a front for all those feminist men out there that have sympathy for women when they could afford a maid or some uh, type of babysitter to hold those kids. Why is They're buying into there? it. They're buying into it because Barack Obama is a pansy. He's a sissy. And he doesn't have the guts to say what he ought to be saying. Wow. And also, Tom, uh, is there any way you can take me out soup style? What's uh, What style? Snoop Dogg style. Oh, Snoop. I thought you said soup style. I'm like, Snoop style. Yes, I certainly can. Biatch. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? What's going on? I'm doing great. Uh, I need some advice for you. I have two different situations. Um, first one, just real brief. I came to LA when I was, uh, 17 years old, got a job, worked, went to JC, went to, uh, college, got my degree, became a teacher of all things. And now, 10 years down the line, I'm realizing I'm maxing out probably like 90, 95, and that's with hustling, you know, throughout the summer and no vacation. So I'm kind of at a crossroads. I just want to know what you think. Should I? Go back and get another degree. Should I stick it out? I got 10 years of service and, or. Well, I mean, look, here's the deal. You knew that teachers get paid crap when you got in. I did, but crap compared to where I came from was awesome. I understand that. But really, in Southern California, where we live, Mike, how far does 90000 or $95,000 a year go Not going far. forward? I mean, as the dollar has eroded over time. As inflation has increased, uh, as the recession has continued, really, how far does it get you? Nowhere. And if the dollar continues to erode and you you can't go any higher, where does that get you in the future? Probably back close to where I started from. (laughs) Oh, that's right. So So, now, uh, really, you have to decide if uh, if being a teacher because you love kids is, is the reason you're there. Or if you were a teacher because you thought you were going to make a great living. In which case, the answer generally is no. Right. So look for a career, too. And th- this is what you have to decide. Okay, my second question for you. And uh, mind you, but I've only been listening for maybe three weeks. So I'm okay. going to get myself in trouble here. Uh, I bought a house. 
with my now ex girlfriend. Now <laughs> we're going to go our separate ways. Would you suggest? And and we're trying to sell it, but it's going to have to be a short sale. It's under market, like a hundred thousand. Would you suggest I hold on to it because real estate ultimately comes back around, or should I just kind of break even and walk? Well, question number one: What are you going to buy her half? Um, I'm going to have to, uh, re I guess, get another loan and just put everything in my name because we we're like down the middle. So what? You're going to take the whole hundred thousand dollar loss? I'm going to take the loss, but then you know, real estate. I'm sure is going to come back around, or you don't think? Yeah, so, but or... how so? How long do you plan to live in that house? Uh. Until I can profit from it. You're never I mean, going to profit from it. Never going to profit from it. Just walk. Ever. 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 Even if you even if you sold, first of all, if you broke even, if you sold it for what you paid for it, you have to pay a 6% agent commission to sell it. Right. So now it has to appreciate by 6%. Right. So how much did you pay for it? By... Five hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to sell it for five hundred and thirty thousand just to break even. And you don't foresee the market rebounding in time within the next five ten years. I don't see a profit. Not a profit. Not if you're down a hundred thousand. Yeah. Just you see the way you have it right now. She has got a fifty percent loss. She got fifty percent of your loss. So just that's a good way to look at it right there. Right. Let her take half the risk. That's awesome. But it was a stupid uh, idea. This is you're new to the show. That's a stupid idea to uh, buy a house with your girlfriend. Ever, it's always a stupid idea, and you're seeing why. In addition to all the crap I have to put up with daily. Well, I, I don't know why you did it. I don't know either. I don't know. The either. sex must have been really good at one time. <laughs> You're laughing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you should. I should have been listening to your show uh, two years ago. Damn straight, you should have. Two years ago. Well, that's what my account. That's what my account time. was telling you me the other me day. Kobe uh, style. Hi, Mike. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Wide Open Telephones, and uh, we continue on Wide Open Telephones with Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Sean. Father, thanks for calling me on the phone with you. Yes. So, uh, hey, there's been a lot of discussion here between, uh, um, between you know, Brock and we have Sarah not having a lot of experience, but if you look between them, Brock really has a lot more. We have here with Sarah. She was governor of a... Uh, a city of 8,000. You know, it's pretty much like, you know... No, she, of, no, no, she was a mayor of a city of 8,000, and she's the governor of a small state. Yeah, so basically, then she was governor of of Alaska, which was approximately 600,000, equivalency of the size of Sacramento. Um, you know, she comes from a journalism degree from a three-tier rated school. We had Obama coming from, you know, Harvard, law degree, his wife, Yale degree right there, top of his class. And, average you know, American, I mean, average American doesn't care. This is the country that celebrates ignorance. Oh, it very much do so. You know, and then we have... So the day. average American, you know, you can quote all the... By the way, I know he's a very smart and well-educated guy. Uh, the average American doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, exhibit A, look at that guy in the White House now. Yeah. By the way, somehow he got great grades in school. Take a look at it. I heard he was a C. Uh, we've got about 3.0, I think, 2.8 to 3.0 he was getting. Um, but then we also have a bigger risk right here. McCain's had cancer four times. You know, there's a good chance that he could die if he wins during his presidency right there. So then it will be left to a, quote, hockey mom with a journalism degree, Knocked up seventeen year old daughter, husband who is what a, a laborer up there. I think he quit quit his job during the time when she was uh, campaigning for lasting uh, governorship. Right there, I mean, he's nothing to talk about either. 
So, well, again, uh, but I don't disagree with what you're saying. Uh, but the American people hate politics. Uh, do not look at all these uh, facts and statistics that you are quoting. Uh, they look at the picture that uh, more comes from the emotional or visceral or gut level. And you yeah. got morons out there going, uh, she's a mom, and yet she's a mom of a special needs kid. And she, you know, she's got to know how to, how to run a country if you can be with a Down syndrome child. I mean, I'm hearing this nonsense now. So none of this stuff, I, 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 I agree with you, but none of this stuff is going to mean anything. Well, well, then the economy will keep on sliding and, you know, it will be the further decay of our nation. You know, if we don't put education first, we don't put intellect first like Europe has done and, and uh, Japan has done, then we'll keep on sliding. Well, I, there's no doubt about that. By the way, did you see the unemployment rate today? Uh, was it 6%? 6.1%. 6 one. Six point one percent. The amount of jobs in the economy has gone down for eight straight months. It's the first time in five years that unemployment has been over six percent. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really ridiculous. The way it is over the right past now. year, the number of unemployed persons has has increased by two point two million, and the unemployment rate just over the past year has risen one point four percentage points. Most of the increase occurred over the last four months. Yeah, no, no, I believe it, and, and there's no strategic plan. You know, I was listening to McCain's speech last night. You know, even though I'm going to vote Democrat, I, I'm, I do like my objectiveness and listen to both sides, which is something I think a lot of these Republicans never do or do or, or whatnot and stuff. And he never gave a clear plan as far as uh, economic recovery. All he's talking about himself being a war hero, which even troubles me some more. I mean, my uncles went to war, and they came back, and they're all they had mental disabilities. So another uh, what another question should be raised is. What is his mental disabilities after going through all those torturous war camps and and again you can ask that question, but the average person is is not going to go there. The average person is going to say he's a hero, he's a war hero, and because he's a war hero, he knows about the military, and because he knows about the military, he'll know what to do with other countries if we get into a war. Yeah, well, that may have mattered a hundred years ago, but right now it's not a military war field. In the world, it's an economic war right now. Again, that I'm not matters. disagreeing with anything you say, and it's clear from your intellect and your ability to be articulate that you will be a Barack Obama supporter. It's also clear you haven't spent a lot of time in the rest of the country outside of Southern California, because I'm telling you, we travel all the time. Yeah. And all the stuff you're saying is going to go right over the heads of the average person. No, I agree. And, you know, talk has been raised, you know, why can't California, you know, be its own separate nation? And I, I would vote for that in a minute. Because, I, I mean, I've not traveled as well as you have, but I've been through the South. I've gone through Alabama, Mississippi, and kind of these deeper areas. And I'm thinking, God, no wonder Bush has won two terms. It's these countries down there with extreme ignorance. And I'm thinking about all our tax dollars that we're generating for the – I'm like, they wouldn't have decent roads or even – to supply their state buildings, their legislation, for, to supply their bureaucracy and their and these states is all from our tax dollars in, on the West Coast. You know, yeah, if they were well, left alone on their own, it, it'd look worse than Mexico. Well, you know? again, you know, you make a lot of good points. Unfortunately, in the real world, most people don't care. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like this, like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Tom, Tom, Tom. Man, oh man. Great son of Sam, look at here, look at here. Tom, let me tell you, you are the truth, the way, and the light. You hear me? The Tom Likes Show. Tom, that's our telephone number. Wide open telephones. It's Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, how's it going, man? Great. Is 
Are you busy over there, Nick? No. When do you plan to start speaking? Uh, right now. Oh. Would you like me to start talking? Why did you call if you were not to talk to me? Oh, sorry about that. No, like, I, I'll tell you something horrible, but, well, yeah, um, so pretty much my story is I've been in love with this girl named Amy since I was a freshman, since I was 15, and I'm 18 now, and, like, I'm already, high, I'm, like, I'm out of high school already, and, you know, she's just telling me that, you know, I want to make a kid, you know, like she's saying the best thing for you and me right now, you know, is to make a kid, and, you know, I'm just unsure about that because... I really don't want a kid right now, but, you know, if I say no or something, then she's just going to be like, well, what, you don't love me or just blah, 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 and I just, like, don't understand what should I do. And then, are, like, you a, are, you a new, are you a new listener? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Are you a new listener? Yes, I am. All right. So you have no idea what my opinion about this would be? No. If you're 18, you're too young to have a girlfriend. Really? Yes. Well, I've, I've been there since, like, you know, I was 15. That doesn't then, make it any... <laughs> Let's say you were too young to drive a truck. Yeah. You're 10, and you've been doing it since you were 7. Yeah, Does that mean true. you should be doing it? No, I shouldn't. Right. Then, you know, I guess probably the best thing that I should do then is, you know what, just break off my relationship and... You know, just do what I want to do for a little bit, and then, you know... As Not I for older, a little bit. You should be doing what you want to do forever. Yeah, that's true, because right now I'm pursuing to be a firefighter, so I'm just going to, you know what, just don't let girls interfere with me then. And then with that, I'll just, you know, just do my career and then not even worry about girls, just worry about my job. That's right, exactly. Do you know how much ass you get as a fireman? A lot, I'm guessing. What have you heard about that? Well, actually, you know what I've heard? I've actually heard that um, when you're a firefighter, you don't really have, um, like, a lot of wives because, you know, you're always on the job at 24-hour shifts. And then with that, you don't really have a wife, and you don't really ever have, like, a steady relationship. So Perfect. Much, I guess that for me is... I didn't ask you, you. I didn't ask you how many relationships you have when you're a fireman. I said, do you know how much tail, how much ass, how much poon you get when you're a fireman? That was what I asked you. Oh, well, I'm guessing that, I don't, honestly, I don't know. You, 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 you don't even have a clue? I have no clue. You, you can probably do it a lot because, you know, you're like a hero and the girls will look up to you. Right, and you're wearing a uniform and you carry a big hose. They love that. Yeah, they, I bet they would. Why do you care if there'd be a relationship? Who cares? You know what, you're right. Like, I guess that I should just do, you know, just do my dream job and just have nothing to worry about it because, you know what? Because girls will come to me, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Go for it, Nick. Oh, uh, man, thanks. Thank you. Have a good one. Appreciate the call. Jared on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. Look, I'm calling to disagree with you about Barack Obama being a pansy for pansy. not calling out Sarah Palin. Pansy. The reason why I'm disagreeing is because it's not Barack versus Palin. It's Barack versus McCain. It doesn't the, matter. That, you know what? We're not, there are no rules here. The idea is win the election. Well, the idea for the Republicans is to pick the soap opera called Sarah Palin, and then that takes the focus off of McCain. And it's been pretty effective, hasn't it? It certainly has. And uh, and, and Barack Obama's uh, approach of saying, no, no, this is off limits, we can't talk about the kids, has not been effective, has it? Well, not as long as everybody keeps talking about Palin. But that's, but that's what they're going to do, and there's nothing you can do about it. So either Barack Obama, figure out the real way to win the election. And stop with this, whoa, no, the sanctimony is smug. Uh, this is uh, not the way elections are supposed to be, and I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to do that, and I don't think anyone else should do that. And anyone who does that will be fired. Forget it. Why not just brush aside the whole Sarah Palin issue to begin with and just focus on McCain? Because you have an opportunity to say something important and the opportunity to say something that's true. Saying, but the opportunity, but the problem is not saying something important or not important. If you say anything 
Yeah, no, no. The, the important thing to do is to say the kind of things that make sound bites on the news. That's how you win the election. Well, well, I'm not in elective office, so I don't know how you win elections. Well, I'm telling you how other people won elections over the years, and it wasn't by being a pussy. Well, it certainly wasn't by playing into the Republicans' game plan, was it, if you're a Democrat? I'm not saying play into the Republicans' game plan. I'm saying beat them at their own game. Republicans have good game. That's well, why George Bush won. Then be prepared to lose again, son. Well, it's always hard to disagree with you, Tom. That's I why know. you're the father. That's right. Can you take me out Bill O'Reilly style? I certainly can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! There you go. Bill O'Reilly, O'Reilly Factor for Kids. It's available at Amazon.com. You can have that man uh, tell you sanctimoniously how to raise your children with respect and morals. That's right. You see his respect and morals. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lawrence on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Tom Not much. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Hey, I'm telling you, McCain and Sarah, I mean, the only reason why those two together is for the oil. I mean, you look at those two, they're both, he's from wherever he's from, she's from Alaska. It's all about the oil. The only reason why they're getting so much publicity, the kid, she looks hella hot. And if she wasn't hot, I don't think there would be no attention for that whole debate between those two. Well, I guess, I guess, though, this is human nature, and so you have to deal with human nature as it is, right? Yeah, and, I mean, Obama, I really think he should win, because those two, I mean, they don't seem like... Obama's a pussy. I'm, I'm not saying he's not a pussy, but I'm saying he seems a better candidate between the two over there trying to run the country. He, his side's way better to run the country. I, I, you know what? He's smarter, more he's smart, articulate. Yeah. And and I would trust him way more than I would trust the other two. But oh, oh yeah, he's another pussy who yeah, will not mean, but... who will not say what he needs to say to win the election. Yeah, and, and therefore I mean... he will go down. Oh, he'll have his dignity and he'll do it the quote unquote right way. But but he will lose. Yeah, I mean he seemed like he would run the country the way it's supposed to be run. Well, again though, if he doesn't uh, speak up. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a man up to, to what needs to go on, what needs to be said, so we can get those kids out of the, uh, Iraq. I mean, I got two friends Sarah there. Palin beat the crap out of him in her speech the other night, and he didn't say anything. Yeah, I think he's just trying to get the publicity on her, and Pussy. he's going to come back. He is a pansy. Yes, he is. But, I mean, he's really good... Really educated. He knows what he's doing. Doesn't matter. You know what? Al Gore is really educated, too. The guy's been a college professor. Yeah. Lo loser. Pansy. Pussy. Oh, sure he is. And, and Barack uh, Obama, same thing. Yes. Yeah, Obama, he just, he needs to man up and show everyone he who he is. Right. He, he needs to be, do something or he's going to lose the race. I don't want to see him lose the race. So I don't want those guys over there any longer in Iraq fighting for something that we're not supposed to be over there fighting for. Trust me when I tell you, uh, right now, Barack Obama has the fight of his life, and the Republicans are better at this than the Democrats. Oh, yeah, I know that. And as long as Obama's a pansy, he's not going to win. Oh, yeah. All right, Tom, can you take me out with the bong and uh, Kobe style? I certainly can. <laughs> This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Connor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Thanks a lot for having me. First time sure. caller. Long time uh -huh. listener. Yeah. Uh... Jeez, man, I, I listen to your show all the time, and I try to fit your your advice into into my life. Um, you know, I'm 29, my wife's 35. 
Um, well, right there, you know, how have you incorporated my advice into your life? You, you married somebody, you got married, A. B, you yeah, married so somebody year six, ago, six so years older than yourself. Yes. Uh, so it, what, how have you followed my advice? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I haven't. I, I got, I got you a little too late in my life there. Right. But, um, well, trying to, trying to make sure I do things right at this time, at least. Um, you know, she's, She's getting close to, you know, where we wanted to have kids. We got married and agreed, you know, when I got close to 30, we'd start having kids. And I'm just, I'm, I'm still just so far away from being even close at all. And she's been so awesome and patient, great person, my best friend. I just, I don't even, I, I have a hard time breaking this kind of news to someone I care about so much, you know? Well, I understand, but you understand that 35... Uh, that's Fisher cut bait time for women having a kid. Uh, you don't yeah. want to have, uh, like Sarah Palin did, you want to have a kid with Down syndrome. Uh, uh, the further you go past age 35, the more likely it is that will happen. Yeah, yeah. Granted. So, so then you have to decide if you want to stay with this person or if you want to get divorced and, uh, get married when you're ready to have children, if that ever happens. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm just. I just. I don't, I don't, I don't sleep. I can't really, I can't really figure this one out. I, I mean, I, you know, you know, my heart, my heart tells me one thing and my mind tells me the other thing, and then trying to figure those two out, they just fight each other all day, you know. Um, I mean, what you don't want to have children, and so uh, uh, do you not want to have children badly enough that you could end this relationship? I, I just don't, I don't want to. I don't want to end up where my older brothers have ended up, which is divorced with a kid or something like that, because they they got into it too early. Uh, you know, I, I'm the youngest of seven, so I got all these older siblings with precedent. And three of them are divorced and have kids by other marriages. All good people, and all take care of their take care of their you know what they got to do. But still, you know, they got these hardships from past relationships and all this baggage that I just want no part of. Uh, well, you, you don't know, have to have a relationship at all. You can just enjoy your life. Yeah, yeah I know. That's true. I, I guess when it comes down to it, it, it really is just my decision to do what I want to do with my life. But Right. And people forget you're not a slave. You have complete yeah. freedom. Yeah. yeah. But once right. you start, once really you start anchoring yourself to... down, once you start anchoring yourself down with children and payments and furniture and real estate that you can't resell... Man, Your options you become limited. Say, what did you say yesterday? He said uh, kids can take 25 to 27 percent of your income. Uh, you know, if, should you end up in divorce and have to pay, you know, uh, child support or anything like that? Those kinds of things scare the scare the heck out of me. You know, that's uh, that's reality. But I also don't want to let those those. You know, I could just. You know, I could just sit down and be scared of what ifs all my life, or I can go and, and appreciate what I have in my life and, and move forward. But there's got to be some reason why I'm why I'm freaked out. I, you know, getting I get I dig too deep into it, and I just end up in a mess. You know. Well, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm what I'm trying to tell you is this: either you look. At 35 years old, it's not surprising when you get married that a woman's going to say, you know what, I'm 35, and if I'm ever going to have kids, now's the time i got to do it. Agree. All right. Uh, uh, now, you should have known that going in. Yeah. yeah. And, and then marrying somebody six years older than you, that just moves the process along a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're right. And I, you know, I'm a... I'm like a tu I'm a touring musician, which she's very supportive of, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a high fidelity guy. I've never cheated on any girl before, and I, I've never, you know, I wouldn't think of cheating on her. I'm not but... suggesting you cheat on anybody. What I'm suggesting is oh. that if you're not sure you want to have kids, you've got to be fair to her and get out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to admit that you're you, it's hard to admit that you're you're wrong and uh, and that you got to say hey I'm I'm wrong and it's my mistake and I don't want to waste your time anymore when when you know she could come back and say well you know what I'm okay with not having kids and because I still want to just be with you but I, I don't I I wouldn't accept that answer from her because I just don't feel that it would be true you know well that's then you see if you if you know her that well. 
you know, uh, by the way, and I hate to be uh, sappy about this or even appear sappy, but sometimes the best way to show you love someone is to, is to let them go. Yeah, no, yeah. I, sometimes cliches are the, the best advice because they're cliches for a reason. But well, that's exactly right. I mean, look, uh, 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 look. We you know we say lots of negative things about chicks on this show and stuff, but the reality is, you got married and you knew she would want to have kids. It is you who has gotten cold feet about that. Yeah. So it's you who has to be the man and step up to the plate and say. I know I promised to do that with you, and now that the time has come, I can't do it. Rather than uh, trying to string her along and drag her along until she's 40 and then really can't do it. Yeah, no, that would be awful. I'd feel awful. Oh. Well, I appreciate the advice, Father Tom. T take me out whatever way you feel like taking me out. <laughs> uh, you know where I go with that? I always go old school. Tom Likens. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. I know a lot of very good-looking men who are very successful, who are happy with... They're idiots. They're women. They're idiots. The Tom Likens Show. It's the Tom Likens Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. It's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second, Kevin. Uh, we have a guest I want to welcome to the program, and uh, we've got him now, so we're going to take him. And uh, joining us right now is a good friend of mine who's been on this show a million times. Uh, not in the last couple of months, but uh, not because we don't think about him. Uh, the gossip editor of the National Enquirer, Mike Walker. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Okay, fine. The man, the myth, the legend. Haven't talked to you in a while. How you doing, been, Tom? Been a long time, I should say. Mike, you're still doing a radio show in L.A. on KABC. Is that right? Uh, no, Tom. I'm what not... happened to that show? No. What happened was they decided to do a sports talk show when the new owners took over. And uh, that Sunday night sports talk show, let me give it a plug, is now where the Mike Walker show with Crystal Ball used to be. Because I used to listen to your show, and uh, indeed, KBC you now has the Dodgers on, on so yeah. I thought you were just being preempted by ball games. I, I didn't know your show was gone. No, gone. Well, you know, the, 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 the station was taken over, as you know, by new owners, and a whole bunch of people got gone. But uh, we didn't expect to be the uh, program director of that station, who you know and who yeah. I know. Uh, and is a good friend, uh, said to me uh, rather prophetically, hey, listen, with your ratings, you'll be the last one to go on, on Sunday night. Well, guess what, Tom? <laughs> That's why they call it radio, baby. Well, in 1992, I was the number one talk show host in Los Angeles, and I was fired from my afternoon drive gig, so I know how it is. Right, I remember that. That's right. <laughs> the slings and arrows of radio. That's how it worked. My God, I was just waiting for the baseball season to end to hear you again, but uh, there we go. Uh, well, Mike Walker, of course, the gossip editor of the National Enquirer, and the National Enquirer, uh, as we all know recently, although it took uh, a lot of slams from a lot of people, uh, broke the John Edwards running down the hallway of the Beverly Hilton story and everything leading up to that and everything that followed. And uh, you guys deserve all the credit because, again, you stood out there by yourselves for a long time That's right. until finally the rest of the media caught up with you. That's right, they did. And, uh, of course, the same thing almost exactly has happened again. It, it's amazing to me that uh, when did McCain announce uh, Sarah Palin as his vice president? It was, uh, it was it, one week ago. It was last Friday. Well, gosh, uh, we already had three, not one, but three reporters uh, in Alaska. And that's why we have the story that beat everybody about, uh, well, everything. I mean, the whole nine yards about some of the dark secrets that are ripping apart uh, Sarah's uh, own family. Uh, she's got it under control now. We saw a very controlled uh, family the other night at the convention, including the young man who got uh, her 17-year-old daughter pregnant. And you know, Tom, I'm sure that they took down his website. It cracked me up where he talked about being a redneck and he liked to kick ass. And he also said on the website, and I don't want any kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, some enterprising people, though, did copy a lot of that content and sent it along to us. Oh, did they? And Yes, and then we went ahead and posted some of that on our own MySpace. I, I thought that you would have told your listeners about that by now. Oh, it's yes, a very absolutely. interesting story, as, as you know, for all the talk about 
uh, Sarah Palin. Of course, we don't, you know, she's a stranger to all of us, and it, it always amazes me when people say to me, well, well, why are you doing this? Why are you, you bringing out these uh, dark secrets, as you call them? Well, because she has set herself up to be uh, the vice president of the United States, and, and with McCain's age, God knows, uh, our next president, perhaps. So it's only fair to look into uh, people's background when they declare themselves. You want to know who you're dealing with. And, of course, we find that Sarah Palin is quite a, uh, quite a tough cookie, which is good, but she also seems to be a cookie who likes to uh, take revenge on people. As you know, she's now undergoing a, uh, a state legislature investigation over whether she fired the state's leading law enforcement uh, uh, figure uh, because he wouldn't fire a state trooper uh, who was having, um, you know, a nasty divorce with her sister. <laughs> so, you know, and then, of course, the other one, we talk about the, uh, the, the and we have quotes from people, and we, and we say very clearly uh, one of these quotes about this uh, so-called affair uh, that uh, she allegedly had with a former business associate of a fisherman, of a fisherman husband, uh, we say very clearly, well, this is an enemy speaking. You know, we, we made that very clear, but enough people are talking about it. Uh, so there are a lot of things that have emerged, and what's crucial about this, I mean, forgetting all that, we all look silly in our sex lives, but forgetting all that, why didn't John McCain's people know that? The National Enquirer, they sent their first Republican reps up there Thursday. The National Enquirer was there before... McCain's reps were there to vet her. This should have been done months ago. It's amazing. Now, now this affair, and I'm looking at uh, no less than a newspaper, uh, uh, the, the London Telegraph, uh, is quoting people from the McCain campaign. And I like the, the phrasing of this, talking about the National Enquirer saying, legal action will be considered with regard to this disgraceful smear, talking about the alleged fa affair that Sarah Palin had uh, with one of her husband's business associates. How did that uh, story come under your lap, as much as you can tell us? Well, uh, it, it wasn't... Uh, how can I put this? I'd love to tell you what wonderful, terrific reporters we are, but, I mean, we just did what you do. We put reporters on the ground, we knocked on doors, we talked to people. I mean, it wasn't handed to us. I mean, somebody didn't call in and say, hey, you guys, because who even knew who Sarah Palin was last week? So yeah. we were just on the ground because we knew that this was probably going to happen, and we wanted to know who our future president, certainly possibly our future vice president, might be. And it's that simple. And by the way, I'd like to know why the McCain campaign is threatening to sue the National Enquirer. Why isn't Sarah Palin threatening to sue the National Enquirer? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I, I, I've seen the story. You guys very carefully phrased it. Uh, you, you didn't use any underhanded, uh, the, the, you know, there were no asterisks or fine print. Uh, you clearly referred to it as an allegation. Right. And uh, I, you know, how do you sue somebody for saying that these allegations have been made? They have been made. Well, they had to say something. And, of course, the, the refuge of the wounded is to quickly say, we're going to sue. As you know, the National Enquirer is the least sued publication of its size in the United States, and that's a matter of fact. Go to and, some of the and, other and, and by the way, before anybody called the National Enquirer part of the liberal media, you guys chased down the John Edwards story as well. Exactly. And that's what's so funny about this. It, it, you know, when everybody's ox is gored, have you seen the, I'm sure you know, uh, Reverend Patrick Mahoney of the Christian Defense Coalition. Oh yeah, uh, his statement just cracked me up. I don't know if you've seen it. He says, uh, he says, uh, well, there wasn't this kind of hysteria when Senator John Edwards had an affair while his wife was dying of cancer. Hello, uh, Reverend. I think there was hysteria. We all remember it. Uh, he says, not when President Bill Clinton sexually manipulated a 19-year-old intern. Yeah, there was an impeachment proceeding against the President of the United States, and then he says. Oh, well, there wasn't all this furor when Senator Obama admitted to using cocaine. Well, that was when he wrote a book, and nobody knew him then. Who cared? So, you know, the, the idea that cats can't look at kings, you know, is, uh, is an old one, Tom. But we're going to continue to look at kings. That's what the National Enquirer does. And I guess it has to be pointed out 
uh, that the main reason you would have it, because people will say, well, even if it's true, why would you have an interest in that? Well, in my view, and I'm sure you don't disagree with what I'm about to say, uh, you know, it's one thing when you are a rock star and you're doing all kinds of crazy things in hotel rooms. Uh, people expect you uh, to engage in this kind of behavior, and it's not that interesting to people to hear that somebody who's out on the road all the time uh, breaking uh, windows and mm -hmm. smashing TV sets is out there having sex with a variety of people. No surprise there. But when the person who, who's allegedly having an affair uh, is out there uh, uh, pounding the drum for uh, conservative family values and uh, uh, anti-abortion rhetoric and, and yeah. teaching abstinence only in schools, well, I, this stuff is fair game. Sorry, folks. Well, remember, uh, first of all, uh, speaking of Sarah Palin, you're exactly on the money, Tom. As always, uh, if you're preaching family values, we'd like to see what your family values are like and see if you talk, you know, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Well, I, I hate to say this, it sounds very catty, but in Sarah Palin's uh, situation with a 17 year old daughter, Bristol, pregnant, I mean, the phrase that comes to my mind is like mother, like daughter. As I'm sure you know by now, uh, she was pregnant, Sarah Palin, uh, when she ran off to get married. She was already pregnant. You know, so yeah. family values. And as far as sex education, Tom, do you know she wouldn't teach, she was against teaching sex education in school because it was too prurient, it was too sexy, if you will? Didn't I see a photo of Sarah Palin on the Internet in, like, hot pants and showing all kinds of cleavage? Well, she... <laughs> Lord knows what you can trust on the Internet anymore, but remember... I know! She's an ex-beauty queen, and, and to give her her due... You know, and, and you saw that the other night when she managed to somehow bring up her lipstick, which uh, I've heard women tell me is, is a little too dark, a little too old-fashioned. And I said, yeah, but that's why Republican guys love her. <laughs> We're out of time, Mike. It's the National Enquirer. It's Mike Walker. Go read it, baby. The Tom Likas Show.